Amen. This morning, I bring you the message, Elijah and the False Prophets. I'm going to ask, ask you to open your Bibles in 1 Kings chapter 18. We're not going to read from um, all this chapter, but we're going to look at um, some verses from 1 to 40. 1 Kings chapter 18. I just want to let you know that when I was a young Christian believer, it was hard to deal with sin in my life. Uh, I remember asking Jesus into my heart every Sunday. I remember the guilt of the bad things that I thought or did, although I was a child, weak after week. But then something very important happened. And up to that point, I had acknowledged Jesus as my Savior, but I had not acknowledged him as my Lord, my King, the ruler of my life. Mm -hmm. And when I surrendered to Christ completely, 100%, that struggle with sin stopped. There was no more fight. And I have to acknowledge I am not perfect. I remember a minister, I met him when he was 107 years old. And he would acknowledge publicly that he was still being tempted. That means we're still vulnerable to sin. But it's not that giant anymore. Mm -hmm. Sin is not that unstoppable force that has all power over me. Yes. And I was powerless completely. The Holy Spirit is in control over my life and I can experience victory in Jesus, Amen. my Savior, Praise forever. Amen. This morning, through the story that I'm going to read about Elijah and Israel, I would like you to feel encouraged to understand that sin no longer has that power over you. You can overcome with the help of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. We're going to talk about a man of God that stood alone before fierce enemies in obedience to God. Elijah. Elijah appears in the Bible in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1. We know very little about Elijah. But his name means, the Lord is my God. What a beautiful name. The Lord is my God. And he was a prophet from the only true God in Israel. Remember that Israel had only one God. He was the true God. Elijah announced a drought that was going to last for three and a half years in Israel. Elijah represents the Christian believer that is persecuted for telling the truth. If you are a pastor, if you are a teacher, a Sunday school teacher or a teacher of the Bible, I am sure you can testify that you go through persecution. Elijah was also persecuted for denouncing the sin of the people. But God faithfully and lovingly protected Elijah and encouraged Elijah to help the people of Israel return to God. Hallelujah. We also 
also see Ahab. If you would like to know a little more about Ahab, chapter 16, verses 29 and 33 describes us how he became king of Israel. His name means father's brother. And I understand why they don't translate it as uncle. My, my, my father's brother is my uncle. But it's, it remains like that, just father's brother. And he was the son of a general that was made king in Israel during the time that the nation of Israel was divided. There was Judah in the south and Israel in the north with 10 of the 12 tribes. Ahab was married to a princess from a foreign country. This princess brought idols and 850 false prophets into Israel. Ahab promoted paganism and idolatry in Israel and that's how he turned his back to God. Ahab represents those Christian believers that think that they can worship the true God and therefore they go to church every Sunday, but they still bow down to Eastern philosophies, to pagan traditions. They still follow human traditions that do not agree with the word of God, therefore they offend God. Just because they like it, or maybe everybody else is doing it. Father's brother means that these people don't go to the Heavenly Father. They don't go to our Father in Heaven. They go to anybody else, to idols, to saints and angels, uh, even dead people, and they seek for help anywhere else. But they don't go to the Father. We see the nation of Israel. They bow down to idols. In other words, they had fallen into idolatry. They worshiped Baal, a false god. And the worship of this God included prostitution and human sacrifices. Baal was the God of fertility for the Canaanites. But at this time they are facing a drought. So why would the God of fertility would work on a drought? <laughs> Didn't make sense, but Whichever way we see it, he was not a true God, therefore he had no power. My brother, my sister, my friends, are you bowing down to any other God? What is your false God? Money? Is it a person? Is it an image made by human hands? What is the false God in your life? The Bible says that Israel was going through a drought. That means there was no water. And spiritually speaking, it means that there was no word of God for three and a half years. God had warned the nation of Israel that there would be droughts and other horrible things if they turned their backs to him. And you can read it. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, the last part of 28. And I have to say this. Oh, why would God have to threaten like that? No, it's not a threat. 
it is a warning. Israel needed to know that when they turn their backs to God, they no longer have God's blessing. If you or in your family, there are difficult situations and you don't know why uh, you guys have to deal with something like that, it may be because you are not under God's blessing because there are false gods in your life or in your family or if you're considering somebody else's life. I know it's shocking, but it's the truth. We, uh, I'm sorry, Israel represents the church today. We think it is acceptable to mingle and mix different religions and philosophies for the sake of unity. The new age. Unity. How can we join darkness? That's not possible, my brothers, my sisters, my friends. Jezebel was a nickname that meaning means lacking honor in Hebrew. Jezebel was a foreigner. She was a priestess of a false god. Her father was a priest and a king the priest of a false god. And in her nation, they worshiped Baal and Asherah. And she, when she went to Israel, she sent to kill the prophets of God. You can read it, 1 Kings chapter 18, more specifically, verse 13. And she was feeding 850 false prophets while the people of Israel was going through a famine. Jezebel represents people that try to push their ungodly agendas and easily deceive the people of God. People like Jezebel entice others to do what is evil, but they make it look good. People like Jezebel put their money, their efforts, their time into things that lead to condemnation, like idolatry, paganism, but they neglect the truly spiritual matters that lead to salvation and they oppose it. And we also see Obadiah. Obadiah means servant of the Lord. And in verse 3 and um, a few more verses we see that Obadiah was a God-fearing man. And this man helped God's prophets by hiding them and feeding them. Obadiah represents the Christian believers that know the word of God. They support their leadership, their spiritual leadership. They are faithful with their giving to the church, but they don't have the courage to stand against wrong and evil. In verse 1, we know, as I said, we're not going to read it. In verse 1, we see that the word of God came to Elijah. There will be rain. And that was a word that brought hope in such desperate situation. In the meantime, as you continue to read chapter 18, I'm just summarizing we see that Ahab went to look for pasture for the horses and the mules together with Obadiah. How sad it is to acknowledge that Ahab did not care about the people of Israel that were hungry and dying. Eventually, 
initially Ahab met Elijah. And Elijah requested to meet with the people of Israel at Mount Carmel and asked also for the 850 false prophets. In verse 20, we see that Ahab listened to Elijah. And it makes sense. Ahab gathered the enemies of Elijah in one place, Mount Carmel. The people of Israel were angry against Elijah because they were blaming Elijah for the drought. He announced it. He didn't bring the, the drought. But sometimes our ignorance makes us blame the wrong person. And there were the 450 prophets, actually it was 850 prophets of a false god against whom Elijah stood. Elijah has God on, on his side and that's all he needed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Many times I do feel like Elijah, like I'm the only one on this side. But I know God is with me and that is all I need. Even if the whole world opposes me, if God is in my side, I know I'm good. Praise God. Amen. We understand that these false prophets of a false God thought that their God would listen to them. They were willing to make sacrifices to this false God, and they believed in their God. They, they have devoted their lives to this false God. They used their strength, their bodies, their sincere prayer. The problem was not their devotion or their faith. It was not their willingness to do whatever it takes to please their deity. And we see that in many religions today. The problem was that they had turned to a false god that did not hear them and he would not respond. Elijah asked Israel to make up their mind. You can find it in verse 21. Make up your mind. We Christians today have also a choice. Do we continue with our unfaithfulness to God? We profess to be Christian believers, but we are adding other things to our worship and we are eliminating other things from our worship, like the name of Jesus. Notice some of the worship songs, the newer ones, they don't want to mention the name of Jesus. Some Look at the horoscope. Because they don't trust God for their future. The Bible condemns these kinds of things. Some talk about karma and vibes and they mix it with the name of Jesus. They pray to angels and ask their people to bless them or bless their family members. They ask their people to protect them. And these are practices that come from pagan religions. None of these things are in the Bible. If you ask me about karma, that's not a teaching from the Bible because this is the proof. Jesus must have been such an evil person 
because karma came to him. He died on a cross, a horrible death. Is that the teaching of the Bible? Because karma says bad things happen to people that have done bad things. Jesus proves that karma is not a teaching from the Bible. Good people also suffer and it's not karma. Some people wear charms and talismans. Sometimes I ask people, oh, these are uh, interesting. Oh, yeah, this is to protect me uh, from sickness. Oh, yeah, this is so that I don't get so nervous anymore and things like that. They don't trust God. They trust those little objects. They trust their charms and their talismans. Some of us are not putting our trust completely in God. And I'm sorry to say this, but that is not anything from the Bible. Some place images inside their churches. And they say we need to see something to help us see God. And I don't know what other excuses there could be, but it's not acceptable. The Bible says no images and don't worship them. Not just that you don't worship them, but you should not have any kind of images in your church. Period. It is not about seeing. It is about believing in a God that we don't see. Blessed are those that believe without seeing. Amen. Going back to, King, to 1 Kings 18, Elijah asked them to be single-minded. If the Lord is God, follow him. And I tell you this, my brother, my sister, my friends, don't mix your Christian faith with any other philosophy or religion. Be single-minded. Your salvation depends on that. Otherwise, you're committing adultery spiritual adultery. I'm going to read 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 30 to 39. And the word of God says, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, and to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put two wood, I'm sorry, and he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt offering, uh, on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the evening offering, of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou 
art God in Israel and that I am thy servant. And that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. That these people may know that thou art the Lord God. And that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. And the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Sometimes we need to see such a powerful sign like this to acknowledge who is the true God. Amen. Truly, in verse 40, we see the hearts of the people turn to God, so they were fully supporting the man of God, Elijah. And Elijah executed the prophets, the false prophets of Baal the false god. And the prophets of Baal received what they did to the prophets of God in Israel. So the servants of God were vindicated. This could be a wonderful ending for this story. And everybody could be going home and praising God because Israel had turned to God. My brothers, my sisters, I am sorry to report to you that this was not a lasting revival. Israel dealt unsuccessfully with idolatry and sin for many more years to the point that Israel was destroyed. And 2 Kings chapter 17 reports how Israel was destroyed due to their sins, how they did not completely turn to God. My brothers, my sisters, my friends. We will continue to unsuccessfully deal with sin in our lives as long as we do it in our own strength. Mm -hmm. We may try to be as good as possible and there are people from other religions that want to do the same thing. They want to be good people. They want to do good things for their gods or for their, according to their religion or their faith. But we will be dealing with these many problems for a long time, as long as we do it in our own strength, without the help of God. Last week, last Friday, about 10 days ago, Friday, April 15th, we remember the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came to die for our sins at the cross. You don't have to fight against sin, not by yourself. Jesus overcame sin at the cross. Every one of the sins in your life were nailed at the cross with Jesus. These are a few of the sins that God nailed on the cross with Jesus. 
There are a few websites that can show a, a listing of sins. There are more than 500. <laughs> so this is just a few of these sins that over which Jesus gave us the victory. Evil thoughts, evil attitudes, lies, theft, mistreatment of other people, alcoholism, addiction to drugs, sex outside of marriage, adultery, lasting for someone that is not my spouse, to wish evil on someone else, rejecting good advice, wasting time, getting angry easily, being vengeful, hating other people, worrying too much, lack of faith, lack of love for self, allowing unbelievers to influence you, lack of love for others, allowing false beliefs to dictate your actions, lack of love for God and forgiveness, reading tarot cards, palm reading, consulting mediums, consulting witches, fear, loving evil, practicing the occult, covetousness, vanity, pride, lack of sincerity, evil company, ungodly entertainment in whichever form, television, movies, games, you name it, insults, put downs, please pay attention, put downs, mockery, no taking spiritual things seriously, stubbornness, consulting the horoscope, pornography, laziness, lack of respect for oneself, disrespecting others, looking down on other people, gossip, speaking evil about others, loving money more than God, judging unjustly, giving your opinion when they don't ask for it, criticizing or judging other people, mistreating your spouse, mistreating children, abusing God's creation, either animals or uh, nature in general, not paying employees on time, abusing people, taking advantage of others, manipulation, idolatry, wearing charms, and as I said, this is only a short list. Jesus overcame sin almost 2,000 years ago at Calvary. Mm. That's why we must surrender and trust Jesus completely. You're not alone. You don't have to do it alone. God is on your side. When you, my brother, my sister, my friend, when you allow the Holy Spirit to reveal sin in your life, then you will be able to repent. And then your heart will change. When you trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, Jesus will destroy all the false gods and all the false prophets in your life. Sin has to be dealt with first before a revival comes into our lives or into our churches or into our nation. I'm going to finish with this. May the Holy Spirit reveal in your life what has to be destroyed. 
May the blood of Jesus cleanse you and free you from any influence that is not from God. My brothers, my sisters, trust God only for your protection, for your healing, for your blessing, and for your salvation. Amen.